So uh, this week we're going to work start with the module uh, number eight, which is uh, AI and fun, basically. Um, lecture ten, the lecture ten blueprints. Um, pretty much it's the, the blueprint and actions, but it's like you know what a transform is, you know what word important is, you know what look like like all of these slides for the most part, you you know already. Why is it? Wow, the slides are acting weird. Uh, points and vectors, addition, subtraction, normalizing, scalar, dot product, forward. So, so basically, there's a whole slide about things you've you've already worked with before. Useful if you go back over it just to review. Um, so slide thirteen. Um, so the idea here is that like you have like a value of like. Basically, the idea here is that you have a value between A and B, and then you want to map it to a range um, going out from between A and B. So, like, the example they give is, like, your current ammo versus your max ammo, and they basically, it's your current ammo between a range, uh, a value between A and B coming in, and you're going to map it between a value to map A, a and B for, like, a percentage. That's kind of how they're, they're doing this. It's a weird way of... Uh, it's a single node to do to map a value out in a weird way. Um, Unreal has a tag system. The tag system is not as bad. I I rag on the tag system really hard in, Un in Unity because there's there's reasons why. It's not as bad as um, Unity's version of it. Um, mostly because basically Unreal has a class structure that's let's let's uh, let that's basically you're dealing with one class as opposed to with Unity you've got multiple game objects that you're dealing with potentially within within your object, and so it's 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 something that basically Unreal has taken from Unity, but it's not like like I don't know any anyone who's using the tag system like in a professional standpoint, it was never there in like Unreal Engine three or earlier. Something that was added in Unreal Engine 4. Again, this is a, if it has this tag, then it does stuff. And we're basically doing something similar by casting to the ca like, hey, we have an object of an actor. Is it of the class type that we we are concerned about? Cool. Because and even if you did like, hey, if it this is there, you know, doing something similar. You know, we would you know cast these don't can do the same with the casting. Um, apply damage, and this is again. Um, Unreal's way of again doing. There is a way to do damage in Unreal. Um, what again? Apply damage. Who is who is being damaged? How much damage is being done? Uh, who is um, what is the event information? Who is causing the damage? And what is the type of damage essentially? And there's, there's a damage class essentially. So like in um, if we're building an RPG, we could do something like we could have generic magic. Uh, we could have um, we, we could have like melee damage. We could have range damage as another type. A third type being magical damage, um, and then you know maybe we do psychic damage for, for the heck of it. And, and then all our damages are like applied based on that in some way. And then here is again um, event hit. Basically, you're going to apply damage, and the damage is, is going to be twenty. Um, and then it's destroying itself. So this is this is basically like a projectile hitting something. And then this is event any damage. So an event that has this set up, there's this now, they're now taking the dam taking the damage value and then doing something with. It. In this case, reducing health. And again, here they're reducing health, but then not then not doing anything um, after the, the health has been changed. Uh, here's get get overlapping actors. So the example there again. This is rather than um, basically what is the class you you are looking for. So we could say pawns. We could say um, you know classes that inherit from our base character type. Um, the other one is so there's an actor version versus uh, a primitive component. So there's a version for like we're going to use the the collision piece, and this is getting over the overlapping actors essentially. So this is an array to get back. So you can ask, like, if there's an array, if, if there's more than one, then we do something. 
So in this case, this is using the box collision, and they're basically um, on a timer damage event. Basically, they are basically every say second, second and a half. They're it's it's time it's ticking off and it's causing some sort of damage. So this is doing uh, damage in area, bespoke style. Um, there are there is a uh, a volume that is called pain causing. So this is how you'd implement like lava or uh, slime or something that's ca causing you know acid, a pool of acid. Uh, you could players in this in this area have them take damage. Here is add child actor component. So. Um, yeah, this basically adds an actor as a component of another actor. So in this case, they're basically adding a weapon. Um, that here, spawn weapon, add child uh, actor component. So what is the target itself? Um, trying to remember that. Here is the actor child actor component there. So you're setting it in the class. So weapon blueprint. Spawn emitter attached. So this is it's adding emitter attached to your to an object. So um, uh, one of the ways we saw that this we could do this is basically we spawned um, an object spawns emitter upon itself, as opposed to like it, whereas we were spawning emitters just into the world itself. Like uh, if we were using the first person template, we could use we could alter the I'm trying to think. The alter the projectile the first person uh, template uses. So when it removes it, when it hits something, before it moves itself in the world, it spawns an emitter in its place. Um, so we can be like lighting up like the world, for example. And here they're actually doing that event hit, spawn emitter, and then destroy actor. So they're using the fire emitter. And this is the AI move to. This is going to be the one that we're going to use a lot of. Um, basically, is here's this AI. Basically, the, the pawn. Who who are we moving? Um, either the dest you we either give it a destination point or we tell it follow a particular actor. Acceptance radius, how close it needs to be, and then stop on overlap. And then there's then is this is the normal exec. Um, what we do when it successes when it gets to its point. Uh, if it fails, it's going to go out here. And there's the, there's also movement result. They're showing. In this case, this this is a switch, says blocked, off path, aborted, invalid. So we can we can do something based on these as well. So this would come off of says uh, I guess success would be the one we pick. But and here is again they're going to a particular destination. They're setting this this variable next point, and this is again what we're here self being the actor that it's in. So we'll actually use this in a blueprint class. Again, on Cess, it's building and using this macro next, find next point, and then calling go next point, which is basically calling this chain. Uh, XU console command, this won't, won't be useful right now, but um, actually be useful. Well, I actually, we're going to use, we use this in uh, in the, we actually use this, it's an example in the networking class, because we're actually, um, there's an execution, there's a console command to, um, when you join, when you join, basically when you join a server, it is, um, you're opening an IP address essentially, and it's a console command that, that sets that all, all that up. Again, in here, they're going uh, on death, restart, restart the level. This is, a single player command. So, let's bring up Unreal Engine for you. And today's going to be a relatively quick lecture given what we have to do. Let me see, Coin Game, this is your, your group. So for the content draw, I'm going to go back to content. I'm going to make a new folder, uh, lab08. And I'm making a new blueprint class of actor. 
this is going to be BP rotating example. <coughs> and this is actually your first, ass first assignment piece. And I'm going to go in, I'm going to the content draw, um, and I'm going to my props. And the first, not props, I want shapes. And I want the... Uh, here it is. I'm going to use the so in the in the example they use the shape cone. I'm going to use the quad shape pyramid, um, mostly because it's going to be easier to see the rotation on this, as opposed to the the cone itself. Um, and then I'm going to actually going to go and I'm just going to add a sphere. If I can type sphere. There we go. And I'm just going to just bake this half its size. I'm going to move this up 100, and I'll put this out uh, 200. I'll do 150. 100. There we go. 100 will do the job for what we want. And I'm not going to worry. I mean, I mean, just 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 sake of having materials on here, uh, I'm going to do um, use the hex pulse on the the orb, and I'll just use this. Just so that we got something nice to look at. All right, the thing that they want to show you in here is that there is a uh, rotation, rotating movement component, and it's basically right here. Like, what is the rotation rate? And it's going to go 180 degrees. So every two seconds. So three. So basically, this is this is going to be um, two seconds to do a full rotation. Uh, 360 will be one second, and then. Uh, 720 will be half a second for a, rot for a rotation. And again, we're going to just rotate around the Z. And I'm going to compile all of this, and I'm going to go back in my map here, uh, jump back to my Lab 8 folder, and I'm going to drop this in here. And we'll press play. You can see, where is it? There it is. And you can see it is rotating. And that's basically all that we, that that assignment is asking you to do is to use that ro rotating piece. All right, I'm going to make a new new uh, level, and I'm just going to do basic. Uh, save everything. I don't need this open anymore. And then I'm going to save the level current level as I'm going to lab eight, and I'll just call it the lab 08 folder. Put it so um, world settings. I'm just going to make sure that I'm using the third person game mode, and then in third person, I'm um, what I want to do again is I want to go to my third person folder blueprint. Let's start a content, and I'm going to copy this into lab eight. So I'm going to copy here, and in la this version, I'm going to rename this to BP. AI. And just so that uh, I'm keeping myself clean, I'm going to go back into the blueprints one more time. I'm going to copy this again. And in this this case, I'm going to rename this one, rename BP Lab 08 Pawn. All right. So basic, basically, what I'm, what I'm doing here is basically I've got... Um, this is going to be the 08 pawn is the one that's going to spawn into the world. So we jump in and yay, there we go. And then I'm going to go to the BPAI, and this is one that I'm actually going to put into the world. And I'm going to put this uh, at about 500, five, negative 500. I'll do negative 500. Should be at zero. Why? Oh, it's spawning in the middle of it. Okay, so I'll put this back at 90. There we go. All right. So let's save. Let's save the level. Let's go into the pawn. All right. So the pawn. This is uh, not the A. Um, hold on. Here we 
There we go. The W, the, the w is the AA pawn. All right. So for our purposes, we're actually going to delete everything out of the event graph because this is just basically setting up movement. Um, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the camera boom and the follow camera. So the AI doesn't, doesn't need that at all. all right. I'm going to go to the viewport. I'm just basically, I'm going to go to the mesh right here and we can actually remove, um, is this inherited? Yeah, it's inherited. So we don't need to touch that. Um, I would remove it if, if it wasn't being inherited through the character class, I'd be removing this, but here's the mesh. Um, I'm just going to go in and I'm basically going to set up. Uh, element zero being, I believe this is arms. So I'm just going to use the hex pulse. And then this one, I'm going to use the hex normal tile. Um, just so that I have something different to look at. So I know this is my bot as opposed to my character in general. So we'll save that. Um, let's go to the event graph. Um, we are going to create, and we're going to add an event, and it's going to be an event, not from mesh. I'm clicking on the mesh. Here we go. Uh, I want to add Wow, why is There we go, add event, add new custom event. And this is going to be, um, we'll call it start chase player. All right, and we're basically we're going to do a, a begin play event where it's basically going to go uh, start chase player. So we're going to call this at begin, begin play. And really is basically is a AI move to node. Again, the pawn right here is going to be again, in, again, self. So our, this actor, and then the target, and then uh, we'll stop an overlap. Um, to be, be on the safe side where we will make a variable here. Um, this will be with uh, with in range, and this will be a float. We'll compile, and then the within range we'll set to we'll set to 25 for our purposes, which is bigger than we need to, but it's okay. And we'll plug that into the accept the the acceptance radius. So then target actor. Um, basically, what we want to do is to get player controller. And we want to get the control pawn. And we'll set that here. So this is, you know, we're, we could we could create a variable and assign that um, in on begin play and then or um, have sign that in the editor. And then then and then actually we couldn't sign in the editor. But basically, this is getting our control pawn um, and instead having it go off and do what it needs to do. And then, and then on success, uh, we're just gonna I'm gonna do a play sound at location. This is gonna be get actor location. Plug that in right there. I'm going to use the I'm gonna use the compile fail sound just just for the sake of having a sound right now. Um, you may not have that. If you don't, don't worry, just find another sound or go find um, sound on the sound. And then once we've done that, we're, we are going to uh, actually, yeah, we're going to do a delay. Use two, uh, two seconds. And then after delay, we're going to start chase player again. So we saw, we set the cycle back up again for it to chase after the player. And we can actually go in, we'll say, we'll say five seconds. And honestly, we should probably do a um, wait to chase 
again. We'll get that. We'll actually set that in here. We can make these visible at ed instance editable. So we can compile. Uh, wait, just again, we'll set this to five seconds. We can compile because we made that change. And we should be good. Uh, there is one thing that we need to do in order for the AI to move about. We need to set up a navigation area. And that is basically a, we go to volumes. It's so the top here. It's a nav mesh volumes volume, uh, nav mesh bounds volume. And I'm going to go to, where, uh, here it is. I'm going to pull it up. So I'm going to do 20 by 20, and I'm going to do four high. Now, the one thing about the nav mesh volume is I'm going to pull it up for one second, and you will see that right here that it is sitting on top of the volume. And that's the problem with that is that it doesn't count the surface underneath it as being part of the volume. So for your purposes, just bring this down. I break this. I'll make this 350 down. Just so that the so the basically this surface area is inside this volume now. So I'm going to grab them. I'm actually going to make them uh, 1,000 negative 1,000 off in the distance, and we'll. I'm going to save everything. Let's go back to my world settings. So I did, I have my pawn. Uh, I should be good at this point. I'll just press play, and you can see that they are now running towards us. And then they will wait five seconds. And here they come. I'm going to run right towards them. can't jump over them let's let's see what happens if I make them smaller so let's go to details let's make them and this is just for the for the the laugh value let's see if I can jump over a half size version of them Ooh. did I not get the Did I? Oh, I didn't get the, the, there we go. It's like they were looking weird. So I'm not, not getting the. So. I'm not getting, picking up enough speed to get get over them like a third time. But there we go. And that's pretty much what our your assignment this week is about. Again. Again, that 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 uh, sound is basically there to indicate you had a question. Yeah, it should be able to walk around walls. Uh, let's let's put in a wall. Uh, let's put in the. Um, starter content architecture. Throw in a wall. See, it went right around the wall. 
So let's let's make this even more acute. Uh, let's make this 90 degrees. Ooh, what's going on with my camera? And you can see it's building navigation um, as I make changes to these with these static meshes. Just duplicate you. There we go. So if I press play, Did ch kind of chase me around, went one way and then came around the other. Let's see which way it goes. It goes this way. So what I'm going to do is going to take this, uh, rotate it 90 degrees. That's not the 90 degrees I want. I'll make a little platform. there. Going too close. Did it lose me? It's interesting. I ran through the wall. So there's there's probably some things um, I probably need to I don't know uh, again let's go we can take a look at the AI uh, there is on success but there's also again this is the switch so we can then. Uh, We'll break this link. We can then on success. It'll be like what? Print blocked. See what what it did. And then the last one is so we can see what, what happened when I jumped over. This time it came around. I think I got a couple moves. I don't know. I don't know what happened to it this time. Uh, 
I think this because this is there's this space down here again what I probably want to do is uh, make this nope, that's not what I want Should have changed the navigation just enough. So that it boarded. Uh, we'll jump up here. So again, we probably have to figure out what's going on with that. What oh, might be on cl too close? I don't know. So it, it boarded. So. I probably, again, have to take a look at what it's doing. Um, so, again, yeah, we can break it. Um, again, the big the big piece is out of the gate, it's chasing me. What's going on? Again, it wasn't having as much issue with the on the switch scenario uh, when just basically on. Let's bring this down. Let's just just gonna reconnect this over here as well. Compile it. I did. Save everything. So I'm getting successes um, that I'm not sure why I'm getting. So I'm just going to break this link. So, so ultimately, that's. I mean, this is basically what we're, we're doing this week. Um, we're setting up an AI. We're setting up an area for the AI to, to work in. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do with this is actually gonna make this uh, ten uh, duplicate that, and I'll duplicate this, and I'll make this twenty. Uh, no, f uh, five. This ten. I'll make this ten here. Um, I'm just gonna just grab you as a as a point of reference. Uh, ten uh, by ten. I'll just make this one. By five. Oh, it's four hundred by two hundred. That's why. Um. So this is really eight. No, six by twelve or do eight. There we go. So this is just just to mark. Been about yeah, there we go, and we'll bring this down. So this is going to mark the area between the two the two zones. So this is now we're setting up. Hey, there's a room here. There's a room here. Um, we'll press press play and then.
here is, yeah, let me remark this. So give me an idea where I'm supposed to walk. Uh, I'm going to cut across. Oh, he's following me. Followed me up to a certain point. So again, I got to re-trigger him to, to follow the player again. But here we go. Here is the, you know, the area that we, you know, follow me. So there's, again, things that I'm, I'm finding out that are issues with the AI at the moment. But still. But here we got the, you know, it's, it's work. Losing my losing the reference. I'll have to figure out why the multiple it's not working with multiple um, mesh boundaries. This is probably something very simple that I'm not doing in terms of linking them together. So, but anyways, again, let's let's just uh, break this back down just to one. Um, any other questions? No? Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to stop the, the recording here.